Hey, OJ, how you doing? Hi, Henry. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Good. Good. Henry, um, I love this show, and it's amazing. A part of what I love so much is the story is so great in addition to the physicality. Is that what attracted you initially to the role? Um, initially, what attracted me to the role was, was my love for the world that CD Projekt Red created um, in The Witcher 3 game. I didn't realize that the books, which I had seen in many a bookstore, um, with game art on them, was actually the original source material. And so once I got stuck into those, I realized how extraordinarily rich these characters were and how three-dimensional they were, how nuanced and complex. And so uh, for season two especially, I, I campaigned very hard to try and bring more of that complexity from the books into, into my character um, and just... Just make him three-dimensional, uh, to make him an intellectual, to make him wise, to make him philosophical. Yes, yeah, still grumpy and petulant, as, as he is in the books. But, and I, I wanted to have that sense of humor. Uh, there's so much to him that I, I wanted to try and bring that in as much as the showrunner's vision would allow. Um, a big word in the show is destiny. And, you know, everyone is trying to find their destiny in the show. Um, and, we, you know, we've, we learned that uh, Wish's Destiny is Thirst Seeking. We talk about that a little bit an overarching theme um, of destiny. Uh, well, I mean, goodness me, it, it's, um, it, it's mentioned a lot. And it is, the thing with destiny is that it's something, Geralt's never liked something to be forced into a corner. And one of the great ironies with Geralt's existence is that despite his dislike of being forced into a corner, despite all of his attempts to maneuver away and around around. Uh, these these horrible scenarios, Blaviken being one of them, for example, uh, he tends to always end up uh, in a tricky spot. And that is part of what it is. It's all about this idea of you can't avoid what's going to happen anyway. And so stop running and instead face. And this is what he's done with, with Cirilla. And uh, whatever that destiny may be, he is um, he's ready to face it and ready to take it on. I have some questions about Witcher's powers because they're not yeah. all fully explained because every time I feel like I watch you, there's you have new powers developing. Is that how it works uh, along the series? Do you get new powers or like can you explain Witcher's powers to me a little bit? Uh, I, the show hasn't really gone into the background of, of all of this and, and the development of, of, of Geralt as such. But uh, it's not that Geralt's developing new powers. It's that Witchers do have a, a variety of they, they can do something, they can cast something called signs, which is like a, a minor form of magic, which is used by mages. And um, it doesn't necessarily require any magical ability, um, but does require um, intense training. And so they have a, a number of signs which they use for different circumstances, but they know them all. And um, it's not something that they learn as they go along. Um, well, I mean, it is when they're in training, but it's not that Geralt, Geralt is developing new signs it's just we haven't seen him use them before amazing thank you so much and we really appreciate it i can't wait for thank everyone to watch season much. two thank you thank you very much um i feel like you guys are the fun crew i feel like you guys have all the fun parts in, like in this show i really like that <laughs> um you know it's just i think it's a fact but um but a you know, in addition to all the fun, a big theme of the show this season is family. Can we talk a, bit, a little bit about that and those happening with like that overall theme this season, family? Are you go for it, honestly, Jay? <laughs> I've I've nothing to say. <laughs> Please go for it. <laughs> okay, go for it. Uh, this is the first time that for Fringella you see her with her family, um, in terms of um, with a genuine connection without everyone else in the room. It's so hard to answer this without spoilers. I know. Um, I, I guess for Fringella, I think about how she has her kind of sorceress family. Yeah. Um, and how those connections, particularly with Yennefer, really influence the decision she makes when she's not with them. And then she has her blood family, um, where she has to negotiate what that should mean and what it does actually mean. And Anya, what about you? I feel like family is a big, especially, you know, we get to see the, th the big three of you guys together uh, with Henry and, 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 and Cersei. So talk a little bit about that. 
Well, that's, I mean, our source material is the books. So um, I think we, were, we all knew where we were headed um, with that dynamic. Um, so it's just really exciting to get to play with them this year. And um, uh, to be honest, I found it quite challenging because she's in a really vulnerable position this year and this season, I keep saying this year. And she meets, uh, like meeting Geralt, for instance, the person who makes her most vulnerable while she's already feeling kind of lost. Um, yeah, I really found that a really tricky relationship to navigate. Um, there's also the elf, the, the elf storyline that we have in season two, which is mm. so strong and so much a part of this season that I really enjoyed play, like playing against, playing with. It was it's such a, an important part of the continent and reflects our world today, the discrimination that else face. Um, so that's a new dynamic that, that, well not a new dynamic, but something that was really um, focused upon this season that um, kind of adds to that, like the roots of Yennefer um, and that trauma. Uh, Joey, are we getting another famous uh, theme song this, e this year, this season? <laughs> Um, I think uh, I think it's fair to say that you can't shut Yaskier up. <laughs> so he's definitely going to keep singing no matter what. Um, whether it's a, th a new theme song, I don't know. But there is m more music that's coming. Uh, it's uh, it's going in a different direction, a, a direction that's darker and a bit more raw. And that that means that we get to use the music now, no longer defining the continent, but it's more a definition. Uh, of, of Yaskia's own artistic merits and his own artistic uh, direction, I think. Mm. So Joe Trapanese and myself uh, worked on some songs, uh, our lovely composer, and we tried to create something that felt new, that felt fresh, and was kind of reflective of the of this tonal shift that yeah. this show seems to have started on. And so that was the that was the aim, really. Amazing. Well, thank you guys. Season two is awesome, and I know everyone's gonna love it. Oh, thank, oh, thank you. you. That's very kind. Hi, guys. Oja Williams, the Nocturnal. Hey, yo, nice to meet you. Hello, nice to meet you. Hi, Kim. Hi, Christopher. Um, the Witcher is such a fun world to play in. Uh, talk about that initial phone call you got when you were asked to be a part of the series. It was, it was lovely, you know. I, I, I knew it from the game, so for me, it was incredible. And then I, I saw the season when Lauren called me in to say that this season has to be about family and we want to see the emotional journey inside Daryl and Siri. And uh, do you want to join me for that? And I was so happy. It was like, wow, what a world to join. Well, for me, it was like, I've read, I've read the piece and I love the character, but I have, I have missed um, a small detail. And the detail was that I was supposed to be a bear meets, uh, uh, boar meets human. So I, I had a meeting with Lauren, the creator, and, and like in the middle of the conversation, I understood like, ah, oh, that's, ah, uh, ah. Uh. So, so, so then I understood that I was supposed to be in this beast suit and, and we had to recreate this, 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 uh, this wonderful monster. <laughs> so, and that just made it even more exciting, right? It was very exciting when you popped on the stream. I mean, I can tell it was you immediately from your voice, which is amazing. Uh, <laughs> was did you try the the suit on? Was that was that all you underneath there? Yeah, no, it, I was part of the whole process to to, 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 to in the creating this 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 man, this beast, and. So we, I had I worked a lot with a, a, a movement uh, trainer to 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 to, to, to find find um, find the movements that made made the made, made the suit live right. So so uh, my nails fitted into the nails of the suit, and you know it was like it was sculptured around me. So um, I, I I became the suit, and it smelled awful afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Kim, you have a, you have your own suit as well. I mean, you guys, some of these sets are just so beautiful. Talk a little bit, like just being filming uh, on the set of The Witcher, just because when you part of what's so amazing is just like the setting you're in. Yeah, you're totally right, and it is like that. It, like everything is built one to one, and and it, not even that. Everything is so detailed. So so you you're having so much fun. You know, you're walking into the world, 
So it's like, it, it, it's just being there. It's like being in, transformed into the world of the ritual. And it helps for everything. It helps for, for, for acting and, and for crew members that we are all together in the same family world here at The Witcher. So it creates a beautiful way of working. Do a, a piece like you guys do, does it feel movie-like when you, cause you're going through a whole emotional arc from start to finish and so much character development, just even from the minute you pop on screen, does it feel like doing a movie when you do a show like this? Well, in my case, it was like, it was, it feels like a movie in the movie, right? So, so the, 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 the episode had, had this, had this arc. So, so you, you, you treat it as, uh, as, as a story is a story, you know, and, 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 and even though it's a season or it's five seasons or whatever you do in a, in a series, you, you treat every, is it, I do, I treat every season or episode as, as, a, as, a, as one whole, right? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Well, I think everyone's going to be super delighted when they see you guys. Thank you so much. Hi, hey, Lauren. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm such a big fan. You have worked on so many of my favorite shows. Um, tell me how working on the shows have prepared you for working on The Witcher. Oh, you know, I feel like my career really turned when I started working for Marvel. Um, Daredevil was my first genre show. I had never uh, never even read a comic book ahead of that. Um, my boys were not old enough to read comic books yet, so they were completely foreign to me. I had not grown up reading them. And I kind of just thought, like, I'm going to dive in and it's time for me to learn this part of the world that I've never experienced before. And it also was my first adaptation. So really learning how to take these stories that are epic and, you know, that fans love and picking the best parts in them, making sure that they're staying sort of uh, narratively sound, making sure you're seeing enough of all the characters. It, it was such a great lesson for um, digging into The Witcher. And then the final show that I did before The Witcher, Umbrella Academy, um, which was just uh, batshit crazy, if I can say that, in the, in the best way, um, really allowed me to embrace that part of The Witcher. The Witcher is a little bonkers at times. Um, I think that surprised people when, when it came out in season one and they expected yeah. a very serious Game of Thrones-esque show. And it's like, no, we don't, there's elves, there's like, there's gonna be a unicorn. It's a very different show. So embracing the sort of wackiness was really important to me as well. Um, and you mentioned source material. How much of the source material are you referencing still? And um, what is that kind of marriage that you're doing with the source material? You know, as, as a writer's room, we always come in with the books first. We've all read them. We come in at the beginning of a season. We talk about the parts of the books that we know that we need to hang on to, the things that we think that fans are really looking forward to, but also our favorite things, and the things that are really going to be the tent poles of our season. And then the next sort of step of that is to talk about what's missing. Um, you know, season two was a really sort of easy thing to look at because Yennefer doesn't have a story in the books until almost the last third of Blood of Elves. Um, and we knew that an audience wasn't going to love if we just kept her on the wings waiting to be called into our main story. No, I mean, um, I, I think yeah. that was a burning question. Like, where is Yennefer? I think you would have had riots. <laughs> uh, yes, completely. And she does, you know, in the books, she just is kind of on the back burner for a while. And again, that works in a novel form. For us, it just didn't work. So we start talking about how to come up with, you know, fully invented new material that still stays true to the tone of the books, but can sort of help flesh things out for us. Um, a big overarching theme, I think, this season is family. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I was so excited to get to this season because from the very beginning, I talked about the show as being one of family. Um, in season one, we don't really get to see that family together at, at all. You know, they interact at different points, but they're not all three on the same page. And this season fulfills that promise. Um, it's It doesn't go necessarily as nicely as you would like. Um, but the other really important part of family is that it's found family. These are three people who don't think that they need anyone else. They don't trust anyone else. They're really self-sufficient and they believe that's how they're meant to walk through continent. And what this season does is sort of breaks down those barriers. All of our characters get to be a little more soulful, a little more um, vulnerable and open and therefore begin relying on each other a little bit. No, and we love to see it. And then the last question is, um, destiny is another big question. You know, I hear that word so often in the season and destiny. Talk a little bit about what that means uh, this season. season. <laughs> I love the destiny drinking game that I heard about because we say it so often that people started drinking to it. 
Um, it's probably uttered just as often in season two because destiny does play a huge role in our world. And I think the really cool thing that I learned about destiny when I started on The Witcher is that destiny also involves choice. It's not fate. It's not something that's predetermined. So your own actions get you to the place that you're meant to be. And so what I love is that there's a, there's a, you know, a, a self-fulfillment part for all of these characters that somewhere inside they know what they need to round out their own experiences. Yen knows eventually she needs to get to Siri. It doesn't necessarily look like how she thinks it should look. Or it's certainly not how Geralt thinks it should look, but she knows she's gonna get there eventually. Amazing. Thank you so much, Lauren. Thank you, OJ. Good to chat. Hi, Freya. Hello. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you? Good. Um, so season two, you are, I think, a lot more busy this season with uh, getting into the action and in the dirt and all the things. Was that more of appeal for you coming back around the second go? Oh, yeah. I mean, I was, you know, when I, I was a bit disappointed when I saw I, you know, was doing for season one because, you know, I don't think her character was done much ju justice within the storyline. But I think this season, we, you know, her character's really fleshed out her, you know, there's so many emotional beats that she goes through and... Um, and yeah, and obviously there's all the fun fighting stuff as well. Yes, and you and you're gonna do it well. Um, a big part of the show this I think this season is uh, the overall theme of destiny and like what that means for each character. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, I mean, destiny is never really something that I think about when I'm playing Siri. Um, I think I think she she obviously is destined for Geralt, but it's more it's more human than that than what that sounds anyway I think you know they establish this relationship they have their their moment of where they're knocking heads because Geralt's um you know knows he's meant to protect this girl but for Ciri she also has more she wants more than that she wants more for her future than that as she sort of says to him and um I think that was fun getting to explore that sort of friction between the two of them and then see it grow and establish into something far more built out of care, genuine care, rather than this sort of duty to uphold from Geralt's side. Um, so yeah, that was that was fun getting to explore that. Oh, for sure. And I think another big uh, topic, I think overall is like family and like also what that means. Yes. Can, yeah, you, talk a little, can you talk a little bit about that as well? Yeah, I mean, um, I think what we've always said is that Yennefer, Geralt and Syria are all orphans. So I think they're all looking for that sort of like, they're still trying to find that part of their life. And um, and especially for Ciri, as she's discovering that even the people that she did see as her family haven't told her so much about who she is. So I think there's a sort of lack of trust as to where she's actually originated from um, and confusion and confusion and identity because, you know, family is such a huge pe part of people's lives. And um, so I think that's why Geralt, means so much to her by the end of the season um and then obviously yennefer is introduced and we finally see the three of them as a three and um i think it's really nice seeing that initial dynamic of what they could be in terms of like even the first time they're ever together as a three you know the scene where Geralt and uh, yennefer are sort of kissing and yet uh, siri comes in um i think that's uh yeah that was uh immediately awkward. shows the potential awkward yeah it's exactly that it was so fun to play and um also i think immediately shows that kind of like family dynamic of uh, you know kid and parents amazing well congrats on season two thank you so much no worries chat soon bye bye